American football in Finland. Okay, so Maple League is back in action this week on Thursday with the Royals versus Roosters and then the Steelers versus Crusaders on Friday. And the game of the week will be on Sunday where the Crocodiles host. So let's spend a little bit of time looking into each one of these matchups. First game is the Thursday Thursday night matchup where we have Va- not Vassal, Wassel Royals versus Helsinki Roosters. Uh Either one of y'all have hmm. an interesting question or storyline about this game that you'd like answered or want to talk about? I've got one. Roosters, are you going to stick to the winning formula? And what I mean by that is getting the ball to Pierce Dume because you've seen it works. Can you stick to that winning formula? I don't know if that will work when you're not playing Wolverines. There you go. Maybe mm, it will. I, I mean, I feel like at so I think the Wolverines was a perfect time to do what they did, but – even against the Royals, who I don't think they're off their defense is great, but I feel like they're going to actually, yeah, yeah, I feel like they're going to have to do more than just give him the ball. I, I feel like their quarterback's going to have to do something. What about, what about like a key matchup? Anybody got a key matchup for this one? I got, I got one. Uh, UC, UC, I, I believe his name is, uh, they call him UC anyway, number six, the, court, the running back for the Roosters. UC. Had, yeah, over, had over 100 had over 100 yards running, running against the Wolverines. Uh, is he going to have a repeat of that against the Royals? The Royals defense obviously a little better than than that, but if they can get the running game going, I think it'll open up a lot uh, for what they want to do in the passing game. So matchup wise, is all right. What is what are they going to do against the Roosters' running game? Quarterback can run the ball. I think they prefer him now not to throw as much. Uh, I think they still want him to throw, but now you see they can do so much with the running backs that they have and the quarterback. So I think the Roosters stick to zone read, fly sweeps, um, getting the ball out on the perimeter. And I think, you know, that'll, that'll be a, a, a big part of this game. Um, if the Roosters can control the clock, I think they'll win this game. Um, I won't say easily because I ain't going to do my boy Tim like that. I think Tim and, 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 and Alpha are going to have a lot on their hands. This game, I think they're going to have a lot in their hands. So um, the matchup that I look forward to, though, is just that, the Roosters running game against against the Royals defense. I'm trying not to mess up my pick, but I was because I, I, whenever you say the matchup, I just kind of think of, like, what I think. I think the Roosters are going to run all over the Royals. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't think the Royals' uh, linebacking group is up to the challenge of stopping the run game. I think their defensive line is really good and will, you know, put pressure and even win some of those matchups against the Roosters O-line. But I don't think their their linebacking group and their secondary will be able to give them the run support they need. You know, I think there's going to be lanes. The Roosters are going to be able to get in those lanes, and the Royals' defense won't fill them. But I mm. think the, the Roosters will try to pass it at some point and mess it up. Oh, maybe. I'm trying Again, I think I picked the Royals. That's why I'm trying not to be too much on the Roosters. I might flip back and decide, you know, maybe I'm picking the Roosters. Uh, an interesting aspect in this one would be, I feel like all my interesting aspects are going to be about this this year, the jerseys. We get to see the blue ones. Royals at home. I've already seen them on the U20 team because obviously they weren't yeah. and half of them play on this team. So their jerseys might already be dirty. Who knows? And also, congratulations. Um, the Wasser Royals U20 team just won the championship, the 11 man championship on this Sunday. We mm. were they won, they won a nice. championship. So, congratulations. Wow. That might be tough for you guys to play another game next week, knowing that you all have won, have already won, you know, the U20 <laughs> championship. Again, half of those kids are now playing on the men's team. So, good luck to them. <laughs> That'll be an interesting aspect. I do want to see what the blue jerseys on top of the gold pants looks like with the white helmet. Is that going to be too much? Is it going to be weird? Like, is it going to be good? I don't I think the white helmet would look good with the white jersey. But I don't know how it's going to look with the blue jersey. And then they have, like, gold pants. And then they wear white socks, right? Yeah. It might be a lot. It might be a lot. Back to when they had, uh, what year was that? When Soderler and them was out there and they had 25 different combinations. Oh. I know and them they, jerseys are way too big for them. Jeez. Yeah, they always three sizes too big. <laughs> At least these jerseys fit, guys. So that the interest aspect of this game is going to be seeing the blue jerseys. And I guess we get to see the Roosters' white jerseys. We haven't seen them play away yet. It's weird these teams play so many games in one spot before they travel. 
No, they had the white ones on in the game, though, then. Oh, yeah, they did. Helsinki white ones against. Yeah. You're right. They did wear the white ones. Yeah. They were the away team in Helsinki. I just forgot yeah. about that. But yeah, it'll be interesting to see those blue jerseys out there. And I'm not I'm just sure where Wasa is playing, if they're playing on, on that grass field again. Oh, they're playing on the, the grass field. Okay. Yeah, so, in the middle of the track. Again, we'll see if the Roosters white jerseys hold up on grass. I'm, I'm interested to see somebody play on grass. Only game we've seen on grass. We saw the, uh, Crocodiles just played on grass. It looked fine. Christian Powell barely got tackled. So his jersey looked pretty clean. <laughs> and when he did get tackled, he was one landing on top of them. So he kept it yeah. clean. So we'll, we'll move to the next game. Calling all you skills players, quarterbacks, receivers, running backs, linebackers, cornerbacks, and safeties. If you were born between 2009 and 2003, this midsummer is your opportunity to shine. We'll be hosting our annual AFF Nordic Challenge 7 vs. 7 tournament in Helsinki on June 21st. Top performers will be selected to join the AFF Team Revo 7v7 travel team that will be competing internationally in the autumn season. Team Revo will also play for the European Championship in the spring of 2024. Due to field availability, registration will close once we meet the maximum number of participants. So head over to our website and sign up today. Registration can be completed at AmericanFootballInFinland.com forward slash Nordic dash challenge. Second game of the week, uh, Corpio Steelers versus UNC Crusaders. Anybody got a question, storyline with this one? Q, anything? Mm. I, I just kind of feel sorry for UNC that they got to play reason over after that loss uh, because that defense is not ready for what this man is about to bring. Um, <laughs> <laughs> offensively, offensively, I think the Crusaders will score. Um, I'm not sure how many touchdowns, but I think they will score. Knowing Robert, he'll find ways to, you know, get Seth and RJ the ball um, and let Seth loot a, a little bit. But I think overall, it's it's not going to match up because the Corpio is just so strong running the ball against a team like that who 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 just have so like who don't tackle well. Um, reason of them, you know, it, he he's he's going to be running with a chip on his shoulder, man. <laughs> so even if it's not him, it'll be the backup running with with. Uh, you know, so I think, um, whew, I, I don't even, the matchup of uh, the questionable, the only matchup I can see, um, that's, uh, that's probably a decent one is, um, UNC receivers against, um, Corpio DBs. Um, just to see if, if they have time to get open, to see if Corpio will be able to stand against, uh, because I doubt that RJ and Seth will be on the same side this game. Um, they had some success once RJ got outside and was able to get one on one, um, against the Butchers. The safety, Nico Royko and Kearney was like right there pretty much the whole game or even somebody in Kearney. I, so I do find that interesting because I think it's going to be hard to put them on both sides because their quarterback really, he looks one way and that's it. So you, yeah. I think that's why they have him on the same side. So he can read one side and have two options. It might be if they're on opposite sides, they might be able to play that, force him to look one way because he, I haven't seen him look left and right all season, seen him look. Yeah. But see, like, like the thing is. Ball. The thing is, I mean, from what I'm seeing, the thing is having them on the same side only works if you're going to force the issue. Yeah. But if you're not going to force, force the issue, it. you're going to make it easier for the DBs because now the safety's coming over, the nickel True. back is coming over, True. the corner's playing up, you know yeah. what I mean? So your first read, it won't be there anyway if you look at that way. So that's why I say maybe spread them out. Now um, Now Corpio Smart. has to, you know, you know, have to kind of like spread, like you have to play the whole field instead of just one side. So at, least, at least they can at least they can exploit matchups. Yeah, yeah, at least yeah. Be able to exploit matchups. It's, it's a good yeah. idea. Um, my I'm gonna throw out my key matchup for this game would be that uh, the Crusaders versus time. How fast can they get mm. out of there? <laughs> and what will the score be when they when they get out of there? Because I'm expecting a fifty burger. Steelers coming back. I need fifty. As a matter of fact, because the Roosters scored sixty eight last week, I need y'all to score seventy and one up them real oh. quick. Can you do it? I think they can. I think against the Crusaders, I would not be surprised, 100%, I would not be surprised if the Steelers score 70 and the Crusaders score 30. Mm. I, I think it can happen that fast that the Crusaders can still score. I think I think that matchup, like you said, of the Crusaders receivers versus Steelers DBs, I think Sid and RJ can win some of the matchups and get some quick points. But also, I think the Steelers will just walk down the field and score. Mm. And if... And after what happened last week, 
if the Steelers want some get back, I see them again putting the ball in Ambrose's hand and him getting buck. I mean, and his receivers being buck naked open for some easy <laughs> touch, like when they played against the Wolverines. I don't believe at all in the uh, Crusaders' defensive prowess at, at this point. At least their defensive back end. I think they they have a really good defensive lineman. And um, no, that's the wrong team. Never mind. They don't have any good players. My bad. Sorry. <laughs> I'm confused. <laughs> I was thinking Royals. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Crusaders, I have no faith in their defense whatsoever. Even when RJ come <laughs> over there, I don't think they can stop a cold. Uh, so <laughs> interesting aspect of this game. So the interesting aspect I have is the attitude. What is the attitude of the Steelers going to be coming into this game off the bounce back of their loss? Are they going to come in with that foot on throat mentality? If they get up, are they going to keep going up? Are they going to try and score 60, 70 points on this team? Because this is an important game for them. They're coming back after an L. They need to show the league that that was just a hiccup in their season and they need to get back to winning ways. So I think that'll be an interesting aspect to see how they come out with the attitude that, that they're going to play with. Yeah, their, their attitude. Uh, hopefully, just putting this out there, hopefully their attitude is we scoring 50. We can put up a 50 burger. That's what I need your attitude to be. But anything less, I don't know. I mean, even if I think even if they like, Beat the Crusaders like thirty something to zero. I feel like they didn't do enough. No, <laughs> like I think the only way they can really like do something is to like blatantly blow this team out. If they don't do that, it I feel like the rest of the league will see that okay, there's ways to beat this team, and people will start trying to figure out those ways more heavily than before. Last game of the weekend is going to be the Senior Crocodiles versus Portable Butchers. I'll take this one. The, the question I have is, do the Butchers have enough no. to beat the Crocodiles? Oh, you answered no. it early. You know, no. I, I feel like they, they could. They could. That, the defense that they showed last week, that defense can hold. That defense can hold. Can they stop Christian Powell? That's just really hard to say because who can? Like, who really can? Mm. I mean, offensively, I think they can score on the Crocodiles. I think the offense that they showed us with uh, Christian Nottenen, Lucas Erola, Miko Seppin in at receiver, they have a lot of options. Mickey J is doing phenomenal for the run game. Like, he does a little bit of the hard work. For a lot of times, he's what keeps their drives going. And Brandon Grinner, can, he, can, he can sling that thing. So they can match up on offense. On defense, their D-line, I think is good enough. I think their D-line is better than the Crocodiles' O-line. But I don't know if their linebacker core is going to match up. So that's why that's my question. Do the Butchers have enough? Mm -hmm. Are they going to be able to either through scheme or players stepping up, make big plays to keep them in this game? And now that, mm -hmm. now that they've seen that, you know, you actually have to stop the Crocodiles. You can't just slow down. You can't let them get in the red zone and hope that they'll stall out and go for it on fourth down. No, they didn't kick field goal. They get points. You got to stop them at the 40. Now, you can't let them get to your 30. You can't wait for your defense to tighten down and be like, okay, we'll get them here because they, they can't kick a field goal in the 25 to 30 yard range. No, they'll just line up and take three. And then you got to start all over and you're down more. So I think that in this game, do the Butchers have enough? Do the Dallas Cowboys have what it takes to beat the Philadelphia Eagles? <laughs> like NFL football, you know what I mean. I I think they I I think I don't think they have enough. Yeah. But I think this will be a good first half game. First half. Um yeah, I, I think I think Brandon Gwinner doesn't make a lot of mistakes in the passing mm -hmm. game. He's not, you know, he's not loose with the ball. Um but I think in the end C P will be the difference. I think Zach Whitehead will actually have a good game this game too. Um, if they if he throws the ball more than twenty times, um, he didn't get to connect with Sakhalita too much, uh, but I think he throws more than fifteen times, which in, which in then will back the defense up. Yeah. Um, and they and because they're gonna come out, Rico. I mean, Nico Warko is going. He's gonna be he's gonna down be in the box. I like him. I like him at, <laughs> at, at outside yeah. linebacker. Like that's a good spot for yeah. him. Now. He he's gonna be down in the box. Kearney will probably be down in the box, and they'll probably yeah. go a lot of man. Um, so at first, I think this first half, they'll try to test and see if the, if, if Porvo can hold up against their it's running the game. Yeah. But, I, and I, but I think overall, I think obviously the Crocs will find a way 
to still get in the end zone, even if they are loading the box. But I don't see Pueblo's defense stopping them all game. Maybe the first half when is is hype and you know they, if their offense is doing something, but Pueblo is going to have to have some long drives too to keep Powell off the field. So I, if I they think that get, defense has to create turnover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the Crocodiles, I don't, I don't know. I'm. I'm just going off of what I'm thinking here from what I've seen so far. They're not huge on making mistakes on offense and turning the ball over. Mm-hmm. And that's one of those things that really sets them apart is you you can't bank on them to make bad throws. Like you, you can't bank on Zach Whitehead to throw interception. You mm-hmm. sure can't bank on Christian Powell to drop the ball or, you know, fumble. So how do yeah. you get, you have to actually stop them? You can't, you know, create a play. I think for the butchers, they have to, do something kind of like how they had the block punt in the last game, something like that. They, they had a block punt that went back for six. That's a 14 point swing right there. Take seven from mm-hmm. them, add seven to you. That's 14 points. They need something like that mm-hmm. in this game to really have enough. It's more than what they have. It's something that you can't script. You can't script big plays. They need a big play, mm-hmm. a couple big plays mm-hmm. to really make this game different than what it should be. Um, for the key matchup, I put Christian Paul versus the Butchers front seven. Makes sense. If if they yeah. can stop him from running, they can win this game. Everything else is moot. I, both teams can score 30 points. Both teams have good enough offenses to score 30 points. Both defenses are good enough to hold a team to under 20 to under 30 points, technically. But ultimately it's gonna come down to how much time Powell is on the field running the ball and how that how that front stops him. We saw last week against the Steelers. You can slow him down, but you can't really stop him. And then even then, you can't slow them down that much. I don't think that the Butchers have a better front seven than the Steelers. I think it's a different front seven, and maybe they do something different. Uh, Steelers made a mistake early in the game against the Crocodiles when they were trying to have like a five-man front, and all it did was let Christian Powell get to the second level faster. So hopefully the mm-hmm. Butchers learn from that and realize you actually got to – have your linebackers flow to the ball at the right spot, in the right holes. That's how you stop the run game. You don't just put everybody up on the line and hope that he runs to where you have people standing or situated. Um, Interesting aspect of this game is similar to what we said about the Steelers game is the mindset of the Crocs and the Butchers. And for me, it's I think the Butchers want to win this game. They will want to win this game more than the Crocodiles want. Crocodiles like we said, they kind of have won the games that were going to be hard that they saw on the schedule. <laughs> but the Butchers, they're still the Dallas Cowboys and Maple Leaf. They're still trying to prove themselves, trying to prove that they're real. Last week wasn't a fluke, or was it? So I think the Butchers might come into this game with a little bit more, like, want to. They might be more hungry in this game than the Crocodiles. I feel like the Crocodiles might a little bit try to throw too much, go away from the whole, you know, we have CP thing and try to be more balanced. And that gives the butchers a chance. Cause I, I think someone like Mickey J could have a couple big plays that really change the way the game is going and make the crocodiles mm-hmm. offense feel like they have to score. And when they get, when the crocodiles offense gets pressured to where they have to score, that's when they start doing things that aren't necessarily their strengths, start making pass plays that don't need to be done but they feel like, okay, there's a sense of urgency to score. I think the Butchers are going to try to pressure them early. Get on get on the scoreboard mm-hmm. early. Make the Crocs feel like they're the teams to come back. And that's a good way to do it. I, I wholeheartedly believe that the Dallas Cowboys want to win this game more than the senior Crocodile. I, I, I know mm-hmm. that's weird to say, but I feel like it's accurate. No, you're right. You're right. I, I think Porvo, I mean, you know, Porvo getting two wins, or, so, you know, it'll it'll be – uh, you know, it'd be a big thing for them to get to get their confidence going. Another thing with Porvo, they got a they got a young team. In, in actuality, yeah. they got a lot of young players. You know, oh, yeah, so players. for you, for a lot of them guys are getting experience, good experience. Um, they learn from from a from a great quarterback that's that's played all over. You know, so um, Porvo, it, it can it, it only goes up for them at this point. Yeah. Um, their depth will come into play against this team because. You know, Powell's going to run the ball. So if you have guys that come in to give those other guys breaks, then, yeah, you're going to have a long day. But if you keep them off the field, if you keep their offense off the field uh, for much of the quarter, Porvo will have a chance, um, just I, like any other team. But Mickey J can I just think it's that. hard to do that. I, Mickey I, I J, think. if Mickey is having some success, if he's having some success, they have a chance of competing in this game heavily 
But yeah. if Mickey can't get going that much and Powell is, it's going to be a long day. Um, I, I honestly believe that the Butchers can win this game. I'm not saying they will, but I believe they can. I think they – this is what the Crocodiles have played, the Royals, the Roosters, and the Steelers, and they've won every game on the field. I think this is the last team that they're going to play that could beat them. Not saying they will. The Crocodiles could still win that's this capable. game. That's, that's, yeah, that's, I think the Butchers, will be. this is the last defense that is going to be capable. And I think that the difference in almost every team in this league is going to be the defenses. But we've already said it. Everybody can get 30. All these offenses can score. They're good offenses. But these defenses are different. And I think the Butchers have a good defense now that they've changed that um, that backfield to be more in tune with their strengths. Uh, Chris, anything about this game? I mean, I think any team could beat any team, arguably, on any day. You know, a lot of people talk about any given Sunday and all that. Yeah. I I, I just can't see the Butchers beating the Crocs in this matchup. The form that the Crocodiles are on and the football that they're playing at the moment, their defense is just solid. Yeah. They, they may even shut week. the Butchers out. They may even shut them out. That's a bottom mm. prediction, but they may even shut them out. And I just yeah, think that the that Crocs are playing the best football. Yeah, I mean, the Crocs are playing the best football at the moment. They're on a roll. They're on. They're riding the train. They need to keep staying on the wave. They need to keep the momentum going because that's what's going to help them in each of these games that they've got coming up, especially this week as well. Because, the, like you say, the Dallas Cowboys, they, they're no pushover. They're a good team. They are yeah. a good team. But yeah. I think the Crocs on form at the moment and the way they've been playing and CP is just, like you say, I don't think the linebacking core is up to it. CP is going to run them ragged. CP looking like offensive play. I mean, not offensive, but you know, Sisu outstanding player of the year. Looking like he won it all this year. Mm. Not playing no games. Mm. No, 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 uh, subliminal tweets to anybody else, but look like he won all, all the smoke this year. So, uh, that's the last game, Crocodile versus Butchers. Let's get into our picks. So right now. The the picks rankings are in first place, Chris Green at eight and one, tied for second place, three way tie, actually kind of like a four way tie. Uh, Perfect Purpose, Spencer Cullen, Coach Q, we all seven and two, and Finland Swami missed the first week and he's four and two. So very similar, just less games. And then we have the guest picks, but I'll worry about those later. We don't worry about that on here. So <laughs> right now. We're gonna go through. We're gonna go through our picks for this week's games because we're the ones out here, you know, putting on the line on line. The other guys just making picks. But uh, we'll briefly go through and name who we have for each matchup and why this week. Um, if you're listening, our picks will be on Instagram and you or and Facebook. You can follow us at American Football in Finland and you make your comments on there and stuff and let us know who's right, who's wrong. But Coach Q, what's your picks for this upcoming weekend? Mm. Why? <laughs> I'm I'm going I'm going Crocs first as we were just talking about it. I'm going Crocs first. I just think they're too strong of a of an offense um, to handle for four quarters. Christian Powell is just too much to deal with. Uh, for vote, I, I love everything about the organization and the guys, but I think that's a little little too much uh, this early in the season to match up with them for a whole game. Oh, uh, who else? Oof. I'm gonna go Steelers, obviously. Yeah, game. Steelers Crusaders. Um, I just think they're over uh, overpowered. Their their defense is is pretty is pretty solid too. Um, UNC doesn't look organized. Like as far as the, I don't I don't say play calling. Play calling is there, but it's just they don't have the chemistry they need right now to compete against a team like them. Um, and they need some more. They need some help. Um, and who else we got? Who else? Uh, we got the Roosters against who? Royals. Royals, Royals versus Roosters. Royals and Roosters. I'm going Roosters. Um, I think they're a more complete team right now. Um, but I do think it'll be a good game. I think it'll be a very good game offensively for both teams. Um, but I just think the Royals defense just doesn't have enough to stop, uh, what the Roosters are bringing, um, to them. The running game is just too strong for that, uh, their, their defense. Um, I hate, I hate to say it because I, I like the Royals and what they have, but it's just not enough on defense to beat any of the top teams. Um, so they definitely need help. I think Alpha will be a big part of the offense this week. So they'll, I think they'll score on the Roosters. Not hard to do right now, but I think uh, overall, um, the Roosters win this game. Though. What about you, Chris? Where are you at? 
Um, I'm going to start back backwards and work the way that Q did as well, because I think the hardest game to pick is the Thursday night game. So Crocodiles and Butchers, I'm going to go with the Crocs. I think they're playing the best football at the moment. They're on a roll. They're playing with their tails up. I can't see the Butchers. Um, I'm not even going to say coming close to them. I think the, I think the Crocs are going to steamroll them. And then secondly, we've got the Steelers and the Crusaders. Steelers, they get it for me. I think Reasonover is going to come out. He's going to run all over them. They need to give him the ball. They're going to be aggressive in this game. They need to be because they need to put a statement. They need to put the rest of the league on watch. And this is a statement game for them. It's important. So they need to put a lot of points on the board. I think the Steelers take it. Now, Royals and Roosters. This is a tough pick for me. Yes. Because I think on any day, either team could beat each other. Agreed. And it's it's a real tough one because they've got both got playmakers and they've both they've both got the ability to win. And mm. this is tough. I, I think I'm gonna go with the Royals. And I'll tell you why. I think the combination of Timothy and Alpha is better than the com- combination of Sinodinos and Dume. Because okay. I think Timothy can get the ball to his receivers better than Sinodinos can. And I think that the Royals, I don't think they're the favourites to win this game, but I think they're going to win this game this week. And it's at the Royals as well. So the Roosters got to travel to them. So I I think the Royals just edge it in, on this occasion. Good picks. Uh, I got same picks. I got Crocodiles and Steelers winning. We all know why. I'm not going to go over it. But I'm over here. I'm still trying to decide if I want to go Roosters or Royals. I guess that's really the hardest game for me. I got... Oh, the Crocodiles beating the Butchers because they're the Dallas Cowboys. I just want to put that on record so people know. I, I believe in you sometimes, but not all the time because you are the Dallas Cowboys. But I I want to say Royals. I'm, I'm going with Royals over the Roosters. I'm not 100% sure why. I think the I think like what Chris said, both offenses are good. The last time I seen the Royals play, I was impressed. Like I was like, damn, they, they know what they're doing out there and they got it going. And I and I want to say the last time I seen the Roosters play, I was like, okay, they won a bye week game. Congratulations. That's the only game I've seen them win is that bye week game. I haven't seen them really beat, you know, legitimate competition, what I would consider competition in this league. So I don't know if I trust that they're going to be able to do that against the, the Royals, who I believe are competition. And I want to say I, I saw the Royals beat the Butchers. Another team I consider a good team. The Roosters haven't beat anybody. When they play, they play two of the best teams, which makes it tough to to judge them. But right now, I just can't pick them over the Royals because the Royals have beaten you know a team that I can measure them against. The Roosters right now just haven't done anything measurable. I think the the Royals defensive line is gonna have more success than the Roosters defensive line, which is gonna gonna lead to their defense not giving up as many points. That's probably the biggest difference for these two teams. So I, I think the the Roosters' defensive line is okay, not great, and I, I don't even like their linebacker group at all. I don't I don't see any spark from that group to do anything, but the Royals' linebacker group also not very good in my opinion. Neither secondary gives me any confidence that they can actually stop anybody. But at least for the Royals, they have some defensive linemen that I think are – able to make enough plays that they don't get they don't give up 40 they maybe give up 30 which is about what they need to give up so i'm gonna go with royals okay i was deciding if i wanted to change it now but i'm gonna go with the royals so i think those are our picks i don't have anything else you got any, anything else you want to talk about these games before we get out of here i think we did it all yeah if you're listening to my voice you're now part of the aff community but don't be shy about supporting us Head over to our website and order some AFF swag. Get a t-shirt for this beautiful summer weather. Or a comfy hoodie you can rock all year long. And if you really want the drip, scoop up one of our limited edition snapback caps. Everything you need to represent the AFF community can be found on our website at AmericanFootballInFinland.com forward slash merch. T-I-F. And never forget T. I F. That's it for this episode of American Football in Finland. Hope it was worth the listen. Any last words before we get out of here, fellas? Nah, good. I'm good. <laughs> I'm just ready for this, this week to so. start. <laughs> hey, we, we've talked a lot. I don't think there's any anything else to say in this week. It, it should be a good week of games. 
game of the, I know game of the week on the Sunday, but for me, game of the week is the Royals Roosters. I think that's yeah. probably going to be the best game this week. Yeah, the Thursday night game. Probably be asleep during it, but yeah. Um, well, we're really excited about the games coming up this week. If you enjoy the show, please follow us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Podbean, YouTube, and wherever you listen to your podcast. And don't forget to give us five stars as well. Anything less tells us you are a hater. You can follow us on the Gram and Facebook at American Football in Finland. Until next time, never forget T I F. We go. We go. There we are. American Football in Finland.